If you're a regular viewer of the Autocar India channel, then you'll already know a lot about the Punch EV. You'll know its pricing, you'll know what it looks like outside and inside, as well as the tech specs. In case you don't, here's a quick recap. Prices for the Punch EV start at 11 lakh rupees and top off at 15.5 lakhs. And there are two powertrains on offer, a medium range 25 kilowatt battery with a claimed 315 km range and coupled to an 82 horsepower motor. And there's a long range version which has the larger 35 kilowatt hour battery, a claimed range of 421 km and comes with a powerful 122 horsepower motor. And today, it's the 122 horsepower version that we're driving. But stay tuned to the Autocar India channel because we will also try and get our hands on the 82 horsepower punch. So in case you aren't already, subscribe to the Autocar India channel now. So when we drove the petrol punch, we really liked many things about the car. But one thing we didn't was its, well, lack of punch. Does this one solve the problem? Yes, it does. Put your foot down and it's quick. It doesn't have that pin you back instant acceleration. But the pace is strong and linear and progress is very rapid. Tata Motors claims a 0 to 100 time of 9.5 seconds, which is very respectable. And if you compare it to its ICE version, really very quick. Now out on the highway, if you want to overtake, for instance, right now I'm at about 70, 75, and I want to overtake a slow moving truck, put your foot down like this and off you go. So power is really good. It's their performance out on the highway. Very, very satisfactory. And there are also three driving modes that you can use to alter the powertrain characteristics. You've got Eco, City and Sport. Uh, Eco is quite usable if you're in slow traffic, but the throttle does feel quite heavy and dead. Uh, sport is quite nice, pretty lively. But without that instant kick and city mode feels perfect for everyday use. And speaking of which... So in the city, as you'd expect in an EV, things are quite smooth and easy. Typically in a hatch or uh, cars at this segment, you'd find an AMT or a CVT, which isn't a very smooth gearbox. This one, well, there is no gearbox, right? So things are quite smooth. So when you want to come to a halt like this, pretty smooth. As is changing pace, so an EV is well suited to city life. And the punch is doing very well here. Even on the brakes, which are all four disc on the 122 horsepower version. Now, one thing I like is there is adjustable regeneration. So you have uh, four levels, well, three levels of regeneration and one with no regeneration. And you can adjust that via the paddles here. And I'm really happy to see that even in a stronger regen mode, you lift off and then get onto the brakes like this. Progress is nice and uniform. You don't have that odd uh, switch over where you can tell in some electrics, you know, when you have the switch from motor regeneration to your actual friction brakes. Like its ICE version, the ride is really a high point on the punch. It just soaks up everything. First of all, right now we are on a highway, so if you're at high speeds, it's got a good level composure and you don't really feel nervous keeping uh, higher speeds. If you do come across bad roads, potholed roads and things like that, it just soaks up everything really nicely. In fact, even some of the sharper edges really don't crash through and I think the suspension is really well judged. And Tata Motors says that's thanks to the EV's stiffer body shell. With its higher torsional rigidity, Tata were able to go softer on the damping and that has really given the punch a super comfortable and capable ride. And to demonstrate that, Tata also had a small off-road track set up where the ride shone right through, as did its off-road ability. Now this is no 4x4, but ground clearance is very impressive at 190mm and the electric punch also has a 350mm water wading depth. That's more than a chimney. There's also hill hold and hill descent control that does help when venturing on the loose stuff. But how does it handle the bends? 
Now, handling is a strong point on the punch. Just push it hard through a corner, it will understeer and there's body roll for sure. But if it's just driving like this enthusiastically through some bends, there's enough grip and confidence behind the wheel. And what of confidence with driving range? We could not test that today, but Tata Motors claims a 421 km range for the 122 horsepower version. Stay tuned to the Autocar India website though, because we will put the punch through our full instrumented testing for an actual real world figure. So that's what it's like from behind the wheel. Now here's a good look at it all around. So on the whole, it's pretty much a punch, but here, as you can see, it's a pretty different front end for the electric version. And it's been updated with Tata's new signature styling elements. So you've got this continuous LED DRLs atop, and this is also functional in the sense that it's a charging indicator. These segments on the two sides of the car also turn amber for the turn signal indicators. The front end, the headlights are down below. The grill area is a lot smaller, this being an EV. And this panel here, houses the charging port, which you can release electrically from the dashboard. And you can also release it manually if you pop open the hood, which has some handy storage too. The electric punch also has a small frunk, and that's something quite handy. The next one doesn't have that, but Tata says that's because this one has been a massively re-engineered platform, as they call it, a new architecture which may be a marketing stretch, but as you've seen and will see, the Punch EV is a very different car with a different electrical and electronics architecture and massively different from behind the wheel too. Now at the side, as you'd expect, things are pretty much the same, but you do have the DOT EV badging to differentiate the electric version. Tire sizes are 16 inches on the 122 horsepower as well as on the 82 horsepower empowered trim, while the rest of the range gets 15 inches. So at the rear, it's pretty similar to the petrol version. So you have these cool arrow-like or triangular tail lights, which I particularly like. Of course, this being the EV, you do have punch.ev proudly lettered across the tailgate. I'm going to pop that open because let's take a look at the boot. So boot space is 366 liters, which is pretty decent. And there's a little bit of storage down below, which I want you to have a look at. So under flow, as you can see, you've got your charging cable and of course the jack and other tools. There is no spare, however. I wish there was though, because the cable could easily have been stored in the front. The rear seat is higher than the petrol version, but I'm really happy to say that you're seated in a very natural position, as you can see from the way I'm seated. Uh, there's also uh, the flat flow, of course. It's also gently sloping upward here, so you have like a natural footrest, and it's not a knees up position. You can't tell that you're sitting on a battery pack, as you do feel in most other EVs. There is sufficient leg room. Headroom for someone taller would be tight though. I am five foot eight and I've got just about a four finger gap here. So someone taller would find their headroom a little bit tight. At the rear, you have a center armrest. There's a small little storage here and that's about it as far as the features go. But at the front end, it's completely loaded and nearly everything that the Nexon EV has on offer is there with the Punch EV2. There's ventilated front seats, power folding outside mirrors, a sunroof, an air purifier, and a Harman sound system. There's also a large 10.2 inch center touchscreen with games and even streaming apps like Amazon built in. And the instrument panel is also a 10.2 inch screen. But I have to say, some of the graphics are too small, and the drive selector, it is a rotary knob, but there is a slight pause when you go through the dial. There's also an electric parking brake with auto hold and a 360 degree camera too. So as you've probably gathered, we really like this car. The electric switch has taken the one major weakness out and while rear space will still be tight for larger folks, on the whole, the electric punch is simply superb. It's loaded to the gills, it drives very well and the ride is simply outstanding. And Tata Motors has nailed the pricing too. The base version starts at 11 lakhs with good kit like climate control and six airbags as standard. 
and the top end with all the bells and whistles comes in at 15.5 lakhs. So as it stacks up, Tata's newest baby sure packs an electrifying punch. Actually, yeah. uh, just tell him to keep a good distance, huh? like because I'll be breaking, talking about the brakes and all that. No, like see, he's okay. quite close to me uh, all the time. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. tail, don't tail. Tell him. Yeah. Okay. Ciao. Bye, bye.